sorry, my, my um, something happened to my phone, it cut out, so I'm going to continue, amen, on the same one, talking about the voice of God, amen, how powerful that is compared to prophecy, amen, through, through scripture, praise God, amen, I was talking about, amen, some of the examples that Peter would be referring to, Abraham, who heard the voice of God, telling him to kill Isaac, there was no scripture for Abraham to lean on, or to, to go and to, to reference, no, nothing, he was on his own, and that's the thing that began, amen, uh, the whole Jewish religion, that is the more um, sure word of prophecy, that is hearing the voice of audibly, Ezekiel, Ezekiel was, amen, told to, amen, go and, you know, bake the, these cakes with poo out of his bottom, now there was no scripture, praise God, um, amen, with uh, Ezekiel, that he could reference, none at all, he was on his own, and he had the whole of the Torah, but nothing, praise God, he had to just rely on the audible voice, amen, and Ezekiel is the one that gets called the son of man 83 times, none of them do, praise God, amen, amen, then you have Hosea, amen, told to marry the harlot, the whore, now you weren't supposed to be allowed whores in Israel, praise, so there's no scripture for, amen, Hosea to lean on, praise God, or you've got Daniel, amen, praise God, amen, amen, the angels are talking to him, and the angels are telling him their names. Now, never, ever, except from the book of Daniel, is any angel given his name. Jacob asked, and the angel said, Why do you ask my name? But it's secret. So, for the first time ever, amen, here comes Daniel with the names of the angels. Amen. From the voice, nothing to lean on. And the same with Noah. Praise God. Making the ark. There was nothing, amen, that was like it before. Just on his own, praise God. Amen. The same of Isaiah 53. Isaiah 53 is pointing that someone's going to come and take the sin of the whole world. There was nothing in scripture, amen, that Isaiah could lean on. That led him, he was on his own. And that's what the audible voice does. That's what Peter is saying. That they also have this more sure word of prophecy. Just like Jesus. Just like Moses. Just like Elijah. But what he's saying in chapter 2, after verse 1920, he said, what's going to come? Amen. Is false prophecies and false teachers that don't have that audible voice, the more sure word of prophecy that Peter said that the Bible also shares with Jesus. Praise God. Amen. That's sad. And that's why you find in Jeremiah, praise God. Amen. 7 in Judges chapter 2. Amen. God is rebuking Israel for not hearkening to his voice. Paul even said the letter kills. But it's the spirit that brings life. It's the voice that brings life to it. And so as you see, as we go through these scriptures, there's absolutely, amen, no sign in the scriptures at all, amen, that hearing directly the audible voice of God, amen, is less powerful, amen, than interpreting prophecies, giving prophecies through the wisdom of scripture. None at all, none at all, praise God. In fact, we know from Miriam, and from Aaron, that it can get you in a lot of trouble. Praise God, because then you can withstand. God said to me, did you not fear to speak against my servant Moses? Why? Because he's hearing my, amen, um, um, word face to face. Praise be to God. So that's some of the examples that we have. And even Jesus, when he's saying, eat my body and drink my blood and nothing in the scripture at all where Jesus could point that out to he was on his own why because what did Jesus say I only speak the thing which I hear my father speak that's what he that's that's what's making him speak it's the audible voice he's hearing that's making him speak praise be to God so I mean that deals with that side now the last section I wanted to go you show you some examples inside of the scripture where it shows you amen that the church is beginning to struggle. Praise God. Why? They're beginning to struggle because they don't have that more sure word of testimony that Peter said that we also have inside of the scripture. Abraham and, and Isaiah, just the same that Jesus and Elijah and Moses has. Because they're starting to lose that. Praise be to God. What's happening? Amen. It's causing the church very slowly 
to lose his life, which of course you can see in Revelations chapter 1 to 3. The churches begin to get terrible rebukes. Why? Because it's not being led by audible prophecy. Let's look at an example. Peter. Peter now is the head of the church. He's leading the church. Got the keys to the kingdom. And Jesus is speaking to him audibly. And Peter's saying, no. Wow, not a good start. It wasn't a good start when Jesus rose from the dead because they didn't believe the testimony of Mary. Now Peter is not believing the audible word that has been spoken to him not a good start which of course Peter ends up getting rebuked later by Paul then you've got praise God amen Paul in Acts when he's being followed by a woman who's demon possessed spirit evil spirits possessed Paul can't discern that it's the wrong spirit speaking to him why again the lack as Apostle Paul said I have not yet apprehended I fall short of the glory of God it took Paul four or five days before he discerned that it was a wrong spirit. Praise be to God. That's what happens when you're, amen, not being led by the far more sure word of prophecy, hearing the voice of God directly. And that's why Jesus had to say, even to the disciples, amen, I, Elijah must come and restore all things. Because Paul and Peter, they're already showing signs of lacking, hearing clearly the audible voice of God. Which is the way Deuteronomy 18, God will seek to turn the whole of nation of Israel to him in the end. Praise God. And that's what Peter is trying to help the church remember that we also have that inside of the scripture. But despite that, people still wander off into their visions and their dreams. Praise be to God. Amen. And think now what they have is more powerful than the voice of God. And you see also in the Old Testament, you see Josiah. A great king, one of the greatest kings. He ends up getting killed unnecessarily. Why? Because he stands in the way of someone that God is sending. Amen. God even told him through the man, God has sent me. But he couldn't hear the audible voice of God. Joshua, in numbers, praise God. Amen. Wants to put the prophets in prison. They won't stop prophesying what they are hearing in the audible voice. And Moses has to rebuke Joshua. Amen. Praise be to God. And that's what we have today. Amen. Joshua's in the church. Praise God. Amen. They, they want to belittle the power of the audible voice of God. And put the visions and the dreams and the prophecies through scripture before it. Which what Peter was not saying. Praise be to God. Amen. And that could go on and on. You know with that John is even in heaven. The apostle. And he has to be told off by the angel in chapter 17, 19. For worshipping angels, he gets told off. So even John in heaven is not able to, 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 to bear what he's seeing. The Lord shall send his servant Elijah, who will be able to hear the voice of God. So you can see, it's not an easy thing to hear the audible voice. And that's why there's so much trouble in the church. Because all that's left for people, visions and dreams and their wisdom, which is leading them astray into all sorts of silly things. Praise be to God. You have great revivals rising up. But out of the revivals, you have Jesus only. Or except you speak in tongues, you can't be saved. And then you, praise God, have, you know, Mormons rise up with Joseph Smith saying that he's hearing an angel's voice. And all of these things rise up. Why? Because they're not the prophet in the land, Elijah, that hears the voice of God like Deuteronomy 18. Amen. And only until that comes... Will you never, ever, ever stop all these divisions that have risen up in the church? That's the only way. Never through prophecy, through the understanding of the scripture or a vision or a dream. No, 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 no. The only thing that will put all these things, amen, in the right place is the prophet that comes in the end time. That hears the voice of God audibly and speaks it to the people. And to finish, we have Solomon there. Yeah? Solomon, with all his wisdom, look at this. There was none, you know, Solomon, amen. There was no one wiser than him, the Bible says. Amen. And God even said, there'll be none like you, even after. Amen. And look at what the wisdom done. Amen. He ended up going astray into all silly things where his wisdom took him. Where his wisdom took him. Are you wiser, praise God, than Solomon? Yeah. Yes. And why is that? Because he didn't hear. The voice of God 
audibly. Amen. And those people that don't have that will always let Miriam and Aaron somewhere down the line will stand he that hears the word of God face to face. Praise God. So, I mean, that's more or less it. We could talk a lot about it. But you've got to make up your own mind from what is spoken there. Okay, by all the scriptures that have been read there. Praise God. That's up to you in Jesus' precious name. Praise God. Amen. But we thanks be to God. You know that, amen, in seven years' time, when the tribulation does not begin, what are you going to say about your wisdom then? Eh? Praise be to God. Amen. And whoever Elijah is, amen, when he's coming, praise be to God. Amen. Amen. I, I am. If he prophesies, amen, that Leo Blair is going to be, well, God already spoke it here first. And like I already said to you, which you're not listening, God will reveal, do nothing, lest he reveal to his servants the prophets first. He'll reveal when he's born. He'll reveal to the prophet he was the Antichrist when he's born. He meant he'll reveal when his 18th birthday is. That man of perdition shall be revealed. All before anybody knows anything. That's the condition of being a prophet. Amen. And there's no one on the internet that's ever done that concerning the Antichrist. Praise be to God. So, and why? That's what comes from hearing the voice of God clearly. Amen. It is what you call a sure word of prophecy. There's nothing more sure than that. And that's what Peter says that the old man in the Bible had. Amen. Just like what Jesus had. Amen. On the Mount of Transfiguration. And that's what the church does not have. Which has caused now all sorts of visions and dreams and misinterpretation. To come in, flood the church of all sorts of heresies. Because they've not held on to that more sure word of testimony. Praise God. So that is it. Anything outside of that doesn't make any sense at all. Amen. But praise God. That's all I'm going to say on that matter. In Jesus' name, I'm sorry. It broke up into two parts. And may God want it in two parts. Amen. Praise be to God. Amen. The Alpha and the Omega Par in Jesus' precious name. So God bless you. Let us pray. Father, thank you so much. Amen. That we're in church today. And there's visions and there's dreams, everything, prophecies being spoken. An interpretation for everything. Like Daniel, it said, No secret thing shall be withheld from thee. Why? Because it's given to you audibly. You're hearing the answer audibly. Amen. You don't have to depend on your wisdom. God said to the angel, Tell Daniel what this thing means. Not dependent on his wisdom at all. Amen. That always goes way above the foolishness of Miriam and of Aaron that have to be rebuked by God, which will be there all the way till the very end. So, Father, we thank you. We worship you. Thank you for your word, for your scripture. In Jesus' precious name. Amen.